Welcome everyone. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician here to host the Market Buzz. This show looks at weekly setups across the US market. Using the tools available on stock charts, we'll look for long time frame trades. Please subscribe to my articles, Twitter feed, and to gregschnell.com. So we still have ourselves a bull market and it continues to be uphill all the way. We've been uh, pushing, pushing, pushing. And since the China trade deal on Friday, we've had uh, some pretty big moves up. I think it was mostly a uh, big gap up on Monday, and then we've kind of just gone sideways for three days now. But we're still going up, so nothing wrong with that. So today I want to talk about a few things. You know, what does a bull market look like? And we're in one, so it's a pretty good time to kind of go through that and how all the indicators are starting to change and behave. So I think that's pretty important. So we want to share that. Uh, Canada has been flat for almost uh, three weeks now. And so that's a bit of a question mark because usually Canada will soften before the U.S. So I'm trying to figure out why, why the Canadians are so grumpy and can't push the market a little bit higher. Anyway, we're going to cover that off. Everything is bullish. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the rest of the world charts. I also pulled up an old chart list I had, and I think it's um, interesting just to go back and look at how I used to look at the market. One of the things that um, it's interesting is I used to do a lot of stuff on daily, and now um, daily is almost like an occasional view, and I spend most of my time on weeklies or monthlies. So uh, that longer term definitely uh, has helped me with my trading, with my uh, not getting whipped around as much and, and staying in my position. So we're going to cover that off. Commodities are rallying on the back of the China news. Uh, just um, as I'm speaking here, U.S. Uh, crude oil surged, gold surged, uh, U.S. dollars um, just it pushed up a little bit this morning, so no change in the dollar, but everything else is kind of all of a sudden popping. So I'm not sure what the news was out there, but uh, lots good there. And the rest of the world is accelerating. So let's go check the charts. I want to jump in and, uh, and cover off a few things. So let's first of all start with this Canadian market. So this goes back to November 18th, and you know you can see that we're sitting around 17,000 back on call it November 15th, and we are sitting at 17,017. So we have done nothing since the middle of November, pretty much a month uh, without any real gains. So this is, uh, again, I don't want to make it sound like uh, the Canadian market decides where the U.S. market is going to go. It's usually that the Canadian market um, can follow a big lead like it did here in November, uh, but it usually starts to wilt before the US market starts to wilt. So anyway, that's one of the things that I'm starting to look at is all of a sudden, this is a 60 minute chart. I'm just pointing out that it's, um, you know, hasn't done anything for a month. And if we just go to a, a daily chart, um, you could just see, you know, there's nothing wrong with it yet. We haven't really broken down or anything here, but we're starting to put in lower momentum here. And if this was to roll over now, we'd have a big divergence. So we'd have price at similar highs and we'd have a lot lower momentum on the second wave. And usually that's how the market starts to stall out. So we want to be aware of that uh, just to see it coming. And then obviously if we go to a weekly chart, what we see on the weekly chart, um, you know, we had broken out to new highs here in September and then we pulled back and we got up to those prior highs and we're just hovering around that number. So this was 16,947, made it up another 100 points above that, but nothing really. And and again, it this doesn't have to be the deciding factor, but, um, you know, here's a good example in... In 2018, the Canadian market basically went sideways all through May, June, July, August. The U.S. market was kind of rising into September, and at the end of September, the Canadian or the U.S. market broke down. The Canadian market was all, you know, it was below its 10-week moving average. It was already making lower highs, lower lows, that kind of thing. So, so far, we still don't have any degradation in the market, but we haven't got any positive uh, direction either. So, it's just something to be aware of. Canada trades a lot with the U.S., so. We should start to see that perk up. Okay, this is how a bull market looks. This is very, um, what are breadth indicators? What do they look like when we're very bullish? And what I've got here right at the bottom is a bunch of jiggles. That doesn't really help. But when we change these jiggles to be just kind of the intraday swings, what the NASDAQ advanced decline line does is it adds these up. So each day that it's up and each day that it's down, it adds them uh, cumulatively and keeps track. 
we have just broken this big downtrend line in uh, in the advanced decline data, and now the cumulative advanced decline data is the way we'd call that. And now we're trending higher here. And as long as this red trend line holds, that's very bullish for the NASDAQ. And you can see markets up, up, and away. Um, we can easily draw a trend line off the October lows and point them straight up here to the December low. Everything is still in bull mode. We don't see any uh, hesitation here yet at all. When we go into the high-low data, this is one of the areas that's finally improved. Um, and we've been struggling with it for a long time. So. Since September 2018, you can see we fell out of bed and we had the big dip here where we had very low readings in the advanced decline data or in the net new high data. And then for most of 2019, we just couldn't even get above 100 net new highs. And so the problem with that is that's kind of how it looked in 2015 and 16 where we just couldn't do anything. What I like now is we're finally starting to get these big bull market surges. Um, so we had one in November, had another now in December, where we're pushing up and lots of stocks are joining that party. Now, I will say the one thing that didn't happen back in, in 2014-15 was we didn't get the big surges up into the 300s, right? We always stayed lower than this. So this is pretty nice to see and kind of suggests the width of the market or the breadth of the market is really, really wide. So having this big thrust here is pretty important and, and gives us a nice healthy backdrop uh, for the market to run higher. Here's the advanced decline data for the, for the New York uh, stock market. So again, New York composite, that's everything within the New York um, trading system and and when we look i know some people say composite and i say composite hopefully that doesn't screw you up but um what i want to show here is again this is trending up nicely has been all year it's been one of the better indicators telling us that we want to stay bullish and so while this continued to perform remember the the nasdaq was gently sloping the other way right it was it had this downward tilt the NASDAQ has a lot of high tech, uh, biotech, that kind of thing. So it's not uncommon for the NASDAQ to have some sort of uh, less aggressive upslope. But the big deal here is we've actually broken it on the NASDAQ. So we're into full upslope mode. And on the New York composite, we're in full upslope mode. And if we go to the S&P 1500, just to look at all the advanced declines together, this is very much in an upslope mode. So as long as all three of these are kind of in gear, this is just a big bull market. This is um, how we want it to be. Looking at the high lows for the New York stock market, this has been telling us all year to be more bullish. And again, the NASDAQ market wasn't getting up into these high readings, but this has been nice and strong and has looked much, much better. And again, it's paid off to be to be bullish. We have had the pullbacks in here and I wanna talk about that in a little bit. Um, but this breakout to these higher highs here is quite important. And I think uh, now that we've got both the NASDAQ and the New York starting to record those higher levels, in order for the market to kind of really break down, what would happen is we would, um, you might remember in 2015 is where we actually topped out, is the market should start to wiggle, make lower lows, lower highs on this indicator and then generally have trouble getting back through the 100. So we're not in that situation just yet, and we seem to have lots of breadth. I mean, we have QE going on, whether or not the Fed wants to call it QE or not. They're injecting liquidity into the system. Um, we have lower interest rates uh, pretty much worldwide. So uh, the Fed's on hold. So all of that is a nice backdrop for a big bull market. We have... Uh, an annual deficit or of 1.3 trillion. The Canadians are doing it. The Europeans are doing it. Everybody's spending more than they have. And uh, as as um, uh, David and I'm forgetting his last name just for a second, but um, David Rosenberg always says, you know, how much should a bull market cost? So anyway, we're spending 1.2 trillion a year to keep this bull market going, and it's working. So at this point, uh, everything is trending higher. 
looking in on uh, the McClellan oscillators. So what we see here is this just continues to stay above this 400 level. That's very, very bullish. Uh, can't complain about any of that. And uh, again, we've stayed bullish and we want to stay bullish until some of this data changes. For the summation index, uh, so sorry, I should have cleared that up. Let me show this one more time. So on the McClellan oscillator, again, it swings back and forth and it's a little bit um, sensitive, so very short time cycle. But the important thing up here is how the summation index, which takes the McClellan oscillator and summarizes it, um, what, what you see here is it's staying very bullish. And with that level of bullishness, that just tells us that the market is still in a big up mode. Like back here in 2017, you stayed for the most part above the 400 level all year, and that was just a great place to be involved. And here we are, we've been staying there since it started. It was rocky in here, but now it's finally started to take off. So that's very bullish. Looking, so that was the um, McClellan oscillator and the summation index over the last couple of years. Here's the summation index for 20 years. Uh, 15, I guess. And what you see here is this coiled spring. And, you know, when I look back here, there's a good example of a coiled spring here in 2015, and that kind of marked the top. There's a good example in 2011, and that kind of marked the top. So I'm puzzled, but again, we're going to stay with the data. It's still very positive. It's staying above 400. This is very bullish, and if it was to start to break down, then we'd notice it, but we don't see that yet. For the NASDAQ summation index, um, so the 400 level was important for the New York composite. When I look at the NASDAQ, it's not nearly as important. This minus 200 level is a little bit more important. And what happens is all the way through 2017, 2018, for the most part, we stayed above it. And in early 2019, we've had some whipsaws here. But staying above it and we're healthily above it right we're up around the 300 level so this is all very bullish when we go through the the bullish percent indexes these are soaring they're up at nice high levels so for the nasdaq it doesn't get much more bullish than than 65 percent you can see that's kind of been the level for the last six years and we're you know within spitting distance of that we're at 62 percent during 2019, we kept topping out at just around 50% on the uh, percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average. We're now at 55. This could still get up to 62, 65%. Um, it, you know, many times in history, it's gone there. Currently, we're at 55%. There's nothing wrong with that. That is just uh, bullish. So all good. When we look at the NASDAQ 100 only, obviously these are the strongest stocks. And what we want to talk about on this particular chart is this is up around 80%. That's as bullish as it gets. So if we think of 100 stocks and 80 of them are on buy signals, that's, that's very, very bullish and very robust. The other 20 could be rising but have not made higher highs yet. And so uh, they could still be in an uptrend but not on the PNF chart, not making a new bull uh, market signature. So another buy signal. Uh, but you can see here, 77% of the stocks are above the 200 day moving average. Recently, we bottomed around 60%. And that's kind of the minimum before this market starts to break down. And what you see back in, in um, 2018 was we started to drop below this 60% down into the 55 and then it just fell apart. So all through the year here, we've been wondering if this 60% level was going to hold, and it did. And now we're, we're up to you know 77%, very, very bullish. Okay, so those two were NASDAQ related. Now we're going to go into the New York composite. And again, um, up around 65%, that's very bullish. These two red lines are in... Uh, that I've put on the chart, just say, you know, when we're up in this range, we're really bullish. Uh, this green line, I didn't move it this morning, but it just suggests, you know, we're very close to being up in the top part of the range. Two thirds of the stocks are on a buy signal on the New York Stock Exchange. That's big. Um, almost 70% of the stocks are above their 200 day moving average. And it can stay that way for a long period of time. So just because this rally seems like it's gone on a couple of months already, and we're used to um, rolling over quickly. Uh, this is a much better place to look for that kind of um, temperature change. Uh, 
we're, we're seeing everything starting to outperform. I'm going to cover off the S&P 500 in the Toronto, and then uh, we'll take a quick break and come back. But for the S&P 500 here, you can see 75% of the stocks are on a buy signal, so out of 300 and uh, so 350 out of 500 stocks are on a buy signal. That's huge. And 80% of them are above their 200-day moving average. That's just so bullish. So all of these readings are right at the top of the scale. It doesn't mean things are about to fall apart. It means things are very well supported any way we look at it. And we have this big bull market ahead of us. Um, for the Toronto Stock Exchange, we're finally up at 70%, which is really interesting, right? We have a 70% of the stocks are above are on a buy signal and 70% of the stocks are above their 200 day moving average. And yet we can, you know, we were going sideways for a month. So that's a little bit odd. But at this point, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, I just want to roll through some of the other uh, the way I used to look at the charts a while ago. And I think you'll find it a little bit interesting and entertaining at the same time. Thanks, everybody. We'll be right back. I'm going to go back and look at these charts. So these are all daily charts, but they're the the international, the iShares international ETFs by country. And the point I want to make is I used to look at, at the candlesticks. And one of the things that happened to me, I'm going to try and stay on the 10 per page. One of the things that I find is the red candles, you know, really stand out and they look really worrisome. And so all the way up here with these red candles, I would worry. Whereas when I just make them, um, bar candles or or what we call open high low closed bars um, the, uh, the color didn't uh, frustrate me as much so first of all that was one thing the other thing I find is that this trend is just too whippy and it's uh, for me uh, I have trouble investing on this shorter time frame so I want to use bigger cycles um, so weekly charts um, this is my relative strength and what I do now is I put a a moving average of one, maybe we should just click on the chart and I'll show you what I mean. So see how this purple doesn't really have a sharp defined area at the top. Well, what we can do on the chart settings down here is set up a moving average of one, and then I'm gonna make it purple, but I could make it blue or whatever I wanted to, obviously. And then what happens is see how this now has a nice crisp edge on it. That's um, the way you do that is just make a moving average of one. So every day it just uh, puts a cap on it and shows you a nice defined line. So I find that more helpful. Um, I used to use the RSI a lot. And the one thing I like about the RSI is when it's above 40 and uh, when it's 40 and above, you're in a bullish mode. And when you're below 40, so down in the 30s, uh, you can be in bearish mode. And so we see back in August, we were down below we hit the 30 level and we stayed down here for a while. The problem I have is on the daily, it's relatively short term. And so this RSI stayed down here for three weeks. And then when it finally pushed above, um, this was quite bullish. But in an RSI reading, you can stop at 60 and still be in a bear market. So it basically makes lower highs and lower lows if it doesn't get above the 60 level. So that was kind of a cheat sheet. So I don't use the RSI as much anymore. I use full stochastics more. Um, in the old days, I used the MACD. Now I use the PPO. The reason I use the percentage price oscillator rather than the MACD, it will generate relatively similar curves. But the scale on the right-hand side is something I can scan for with the PPO. So I can say I want to find all of the stocks turning up with a PPO um, near zero, as an example. And it'll it'll um, give me a list. I can't do that with the MACD because um, on this particular stock, the scale on the right hand side here is going up by ten cents, and the scale on the MACD is like thirty cents. Whereas if I go and look at Amazon stock, the scale on the MACD is like fifty dollars or one hundred and fifty dollars or something radical like that. So it's much different um than the way i used to look at the charts and uh, hopefully uh 
you know, when we go back and look at this TSX chart. So again, I've still got that crisp edge on the top, but what, what can you see about the Canadian market? It's been underperforming the S&P for five years. And so we see this big uptrend here in uh, 2019. Obviously, everything rallied higher, and we're just sitting here going sideways for six weeks. And then when we look down here at the PPO, the momentum is up at 1%, no big deal. But again, if it was coming down near zero or if I wanted to scan for stocks near 1%, I could do that. And I would get a whole range of them. So again, just it's interesting to see how my charting has evolved over the years. These were originally set up back in 2011. Okay, so let's just go back to the... Um, 10 per page group. And the point I want to make here is the, the Australian market has broken out to a new 52-week um, high right now. The Canadian, uh, yeah, Canada's ETF, in terms of US dollars, has broken out to a new high. I think the important thing to realize here is it's really the change in the US dollar. So the Canadian dollars moved up, US dollars moved down. And that's what's generated this push up in, in Canadian dollars, we haven't really had, um, I mean, we're, we're back at prior highs, but we haven't broken out um, in Canadian dollars. The Swedish market, uh, way up here, hitting new 52-week highs, very, very bullish. Uh, Germany recently was up there, and it's falling down today, so I'm noticing some weakness in Europe starting here. And again, the Canadian market flats, so we'll just keep watching. This might be the effect of the euro, who knows? Anyway, we can, uh, we'll keep, watching that. We do have a little bit of negative divergence if this was going to roll over here. That would give us a clue that maybe Europe wants to pause. Hong Kong, trying to get through these three-month highs, and again, with all the protests and stuff going on there, um, hard place to be invested. You're going to have recessionary GDP levels, but uh, again, the, the investors are trying to look through that so far and uh, trying to break out of this range under $24. Italy, uh, we're up over, um, you know, hitting new 52-week highs. Again, all of these are in terms of U.S. dollars, but this is trying to break out here. Japanese market definitely heading higher, pulling back a little bit today. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe the market needs to breathe a little bit here. Belgium, uh, big pop, and again, this is home, head of the EU is in Belgium, so a lot of times I find this chart um, can be helpful, it's kind of, it can be leading. Um, so here's October 14th, and it's starting to try and get above prior highs, it's above most of them with the exception of these three, it only takes a few more days and it goes up there, and uh, I think the S&P started to break out October 28th, if I'm not mistaken. So this was kind of a week early. Anyway, it's been an uptrend ever since. Pull back to the 22-day moving average. But, you know, this is all positive slope. If this pulled back here, would that be a problem? No. Uh, Switzerland, still taken off to the upside. Very, very bullish. Malaysia, really a big pop today. Uh, starting to jump up. And again, if Asia is going to start to outperform, that would help or at least perform in line. Uh, the Netherlands ETF, same thing as some of the other European ones. And again, uh, that's why I don't use daily charts. Typically, I just think it's interesting to roll through these and just see how I looked at things before. Um, I would measure whether or not they were above or below their, their 11 day, their 22 day. And it was the Swedish market that usually signaled first, the Belgium market second. Um, just some interesting pieces of data like that. Anyway, the um, Austria market here rolling over um, at a kind of a double top, so that could be interesting. Here's Spain, big breakout here too. I think new 52-week highs are very close to 52-week highs. France, um, nice push on the back of the trade deal last week, but now pulling back just slightly. Singapore uh, making a lower high at this point here, but it doesn't mean it's done. It's trying to get through this prior resistance, and as it does that, um, a new a new push up into bull market territory would be um, obviously welcome. Here's Taiwan. 
and we see it breaking out to the top side so another one this is good for um, technology stocks semiconductors all that kind of thing united kingdom after all of the brexit vote we can see or not the brexit vote but the election um kind of putting boris johnson in to finish brexit this has been received pretty well um and the market uh, responding nicely looking at mexico we can see this chart taking off so now that the um, USCAM deal is signed, uh, starting to take off to the upside here. And South Korea uh, breaking out to new six month highs. That's very bullish. Uh, Brazil breaking out. So, again, the point I want to make is the whole world is starting to kick it up. When I go look at the materials, so this is the um, sectors the xlb i've got the cumulative money flow on here or chicken money flow on here you can see this is just starting to go negative and that surprises me a little bit i'd like to see the copper and those types of material stocks start to lead out of here energy even though energy's been turning up and the scooter rankings actually starting to improve there hasn't been any real cash flow into it yet which is a bit of a surprise um, companies like cnq i own it so just for full disclosure but it started to break out. I think it hit new 52 week highs in the US last week. So, um, you know, we're starting to see positive returns like that. XLF um, still continuing to do very, very well here. Um, XLI, you can see with the Boeing change here, this has been slowing down over the last couple of weeks. But XLI really starting to underperform. That's what this purple line shows compared to the S&P 500. And we're, you know, haven't been able to get through the prior highs yet. Technology, lots of money flow into it. And this thing is taken up to the right hand corner. This was the surprise to me. Look at how much is coming into consumer staples lately and, and compare that all the way through here. So all of a sudden, after October and November, big surges, look at December. All of a sudden, a bunch of people soaring into safety. I was surprised about that or a bunch of money soaring in there. Same with utilities starting to show up. So I just think, uh, you know, interesting to look for a trend change on that. For the healthcare, obviously money's been flowing in there. That's been, that chart's been straight up basically since the October lows. Uh, consumer discretionary made a new 52 week high today or yesterday. Very, very bullish. Um, money flows pretty good, not quite as big as we've seen on some of the other ones, but still very positive. And, um, I don't want to jump into any more than that right now. I do want to show you this chart because I finally incorporated it or brought it over to stock charts. This is one of the things that my members get to see, uh, the people who subscribe to my work, and this is some historical stuff I've done. So I've taken spreadsheets of a bunch of different things going on in the market and try to help me find market tops better. So you can see back here in uh, September of, of 20. 18 when the market was about to break down this signal started to fail here and rolled over just below this 80 level and broke down and stayed down here for a long time and that was really the clue when it fell all the way to the bottom that it was pretty significant and then rallied back up and stayed up here for a long time basically started to break down again but each time we're putting in lower highs here and right now we've been hovering around this 70 percent level with not as much participation across the groups so that's one of the things i want to watch for coming up here. So subscribers will get a timely note saying that the market's about to top out um, with that indicator. Okay, so thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs live on Wednesdays and Fridays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Pacific Time on Stock Charts TV. You can also catch us, um, <laughs> you can also catch us on the Stock Charts YouTube channel for replays. And the big thing that I think uh, everybody needs to be reminded of is we've got the Market Vision 2020 with all the Stock Charts analysts coming up. You can go to earningsbeats.com and register there. Thanks, everybody. See you Friday.